Welcome back, everyone. We were discussing about the influence of uh, the spirit world on the natural world. Uh, here in the chat section, uh, Lucy is saying, Sister, in our intercessory prayers, we are declaring God's word over the members of our family who have a longing desire to have alcohol during family get-togethers, not able to see any changes over the individual families. I'm not understanding where might we be wrong in speaking God's word. So, uh, Sister Lucy, what you're doing is correct. Declaring God's word is the way in which we are enforcing the victory of the cross. Okay. So when, when we declare God's word or when we make declarations such as, uh, let's say, you know, a child is in substance abuse and uh, as parents, uh, they are praying that, you know, my son will, will serve the Lord because there are scriptures that say that uh, those, those who fear the Lord, uh, the righteous, their children will be mighty on the earth. So when I make a declaration like that, I'm not wrong. It's very scriptural. Uh, there are passages of scripture where God says, I will pour out my spirit on your descendants, on your children's children. And, you know, my word will be in their mouth. So these are declarations that we can make. And it is right. We need to do that. Because what are we doing? That is faith. Right now we can't see it. But we know that the power of the word of God will touch them. So Sister Lucy, uh, continue to do that. Yes, sister. You said, uh, yeah, you can hear me? Yes, sister, I'm able to hear. Yeah. So I'm saying continue to do that. It is the right thing. Along with that, you would need to have some patience. Okay. Sister, can I have uh, any some of the verses in particular to declare upon their lives? Hmm. Uh, for this particular thing, is it? Yes, sister. Okay, so can I can I enlist them and post it on the stream page later on? Yes, sister. Yes, sister. Thank you. Yeah, so yeah. I'll do that. So you can make these declarations. Um, yeah, and other than that, see, we, we can be very spiritual in our diagnosis. But it's also good to be practical. Be spiritual, but it doesn't mean we cannot be practical. So uh, going back to the example that I shared of a parent with a child who is in substance abuse, uh, it's different from your uh, scenario uh, here, Sister Lucy. Yes, sister. Okay. Yeah. So uh, along with praying, along with declaring, uh, what the parents could also consider is maybe counseling, like what's happening, what's happening in the child's mind. Um, Maybe the child is not able to talk, speak out what happened. So speaking to uh, maybe a trained counselor or an, you know, like an elder might help and show us what are those issues that need to be addressed? What are those problems that need to be um, dealt with? So we can be practical also. Maybe counseling will help. Uh, maybe some form of therapy could help. Uh, we shouldn't, just because we are looking at it from the spiritual lens, we must not dismiss the practical aspects that must also be considered. When we consider both, the change might be faster. Okay, so uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that, Sister Lucy, I hope you agree with me. My sister, thank you. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Um, we'll move on with our notes, but please keep asking these questions. It's really good. So we said about the influence of the spirit world. And um, we looked at, I was giving the example of uh, Ephesus, where there was the influence of the goddess of Diana, and that had affected everything. Uh, people's lifestyle, their worship, uh, there were people who were making those idols, uh, and that place had become a tourist destination just for the worship of the goddess of Diana. So you see how everything is affected. Business, culture, lifestyle, uh, and we said art form, right? Satan can use art forms as his expression. So in this case, the uh, the art of sculpting, okay, 
it's being utilized to make idols for worship and we see many of the these things happening around us and we wonder how come people are into so deeply into these things uh, even when we share the truth with them it's possible that there can be something deeper of a demonic influence that is keeping people in bondage okay that is why they are where they are and and so we as believers will need to go against the work of the enemy to uh, release deliverance in their lives so circumstances situations world systems geographic regions and territories you know, i said uh, uh, ephesus but even corinth corinth and and uh, there was a lot of opposition that paul faced in corinth uh, when he went to athens right or athens however you want to call it over there people were very intellectual so when paul was preaching about jesus they couldn't receive it easily they wanted something new something exciting paul come on tell us something you know some philosophy but even that way of thinking pattern of thinking keeping them in bondage that they're not able to receive the gospel these are all ways in which satan can influence communities groups of people territories and uh, you know geographic regions we said organizations and institutions sometimes there are certain organizations all of our organizations have a vision they have a mission something they want to accomplish but you see there could be organizations that outrightly have the wrong vision you know to um, to Uh, uh, you know maybe draw people away from god uh, or you you can just i mean i don't want to get into it so i'll start seeing some details and you maybe get myself into trouble but you get it right organizations institutions that may outright outrightly have the wrong motivation or they can seem very right but have some influences that mislead people uh, so it can happen activities activities we said like alcoholism i pointed out uh, we may find that it's very strange how in in a place where there's good education good medical facilities good opportunities young people are still addicted lots and lots of young people are still addicted to maybe alcohol or you know some drug drug abuse is happening maybe there is a spiritual aspect or a spiritual angle to it where demons are causing it we see that uh, there can be an influence in all kinds of other uh, ungodly activities even uh, mob violence sometimes you wonder how can all the people get together and bash up uh, you know uh, one person one weak person or uh, cause a lot of destruction in the city sometimes there are spirits behind it the people themselves don't know what they are doing but they are influenced by demonic spirits and those spirits cause all this they cause violence they cause murders they cause you know crimes against women so many things are happening and then people are like oh did we even do that why did we do that it's so wrong so i'm not saying that uh, you know we can resign um, any responsibility like not take responsibility for what has happened but i'm just helping us think that apart from people doing things wantedly there can be a demonic influence which is also making people do and uh, you know to add to that in large numbers ungodly things evil things wicked things okay uh, so that's who satan is right spirit of wickedness he carries that so uh, when when we see things like this we can understand hey this is what is going on here all right and uh, uh, someone came in, in the middle during the break and asked a really good question how do we address when we see that we're not able to penetrate uh, with the gospel how do we really minister to people maybe they are caught up in things like this so what we are learning in this class is helping us understand how do we approach right uh, such communities so firstly there'll be the spiritual things spiritual strategies which we need where we have to in the spiritual 
tear down the works of the devil uproot the strongholds of the devil so that's the way we would approach first destroy whatever he has set up destroy it how are we going to destroy through prayer through praise through declaration through de decreeing the word of god right acts of faith so through all this we first destroy and then as the lord leads strategically we'll have some methods right through which we can enter in and preach the gospel and see a change in that particular community but imagine if we never understood this angle that there is a spiritual influence we'll only do the physical you know or, or natural things that come to our mind and we may we may think that it's really not working because there's more to it there are demon powers which we need to fight and evict before we can see the work of god established powerfully okay so yes satan and his demons can influence through these activities also evil activities now uh satan demons can also influence spaces when we say spaces um we mean you know any any given space you go to a particular place uh it, it can be a building or you know like like some something that is set up for worship of a certain god uh, do those places have demonic influence yes they do uh maybe even some homes or shops or you know name any building could they have demonic influence yeah they could if the people who are responsible for that place allow demonic presence okay and how do people allow demonic presence we look at that now but yes even spaces buildings can have demons in them objects sometimes objects can carry demons in them okay um now there there are there is one passage we will read it later but what we recognize is satan does all this so that he can uh, influence people he can interfere in their lives okay so um when it comes to places when it comes to things we can be cautious we can be cautious in what we um we keep with us or we carry back with us so a simple example is sometimes you know we go on a tour we go visiting new places and uh, we buy stuff we may not have an idea that there are certain things which are of worship okay something that is dedicated to this god and dedicated to that god it might be a very tiny nice looking thing that you pick up and you think it's a souvenir i'll just take it back home and keep it but if it is an object that has been consecrated or dedicated to some kind of a spirit then it may carry an influence sometimes people come away with that influence and then you know things can happen so uh, whenever in doubt if you are doubtful about anything that uh, i don't know whether this has any influence just don't take it that's all it's as simple as that and if you feel something you have has an influence just throw it that's it okay so don't uh, make it a big deal it's not a big deal um, but the bible does say that it can happen okay even objects can carry demonic influence in them uh, so all this will help us to go against the enemy and take our authority that's why we are discussing these things so now that we said yes uh, demons can influence how do they end up influencing that's the question so we have we have listed here at least four different practices or things that people do through which the demons can influence okay so what are these four firstly disciplines disciplines so when we look at something as a discipline it generally is associated with habits okay for example you know i usually say uh, if if you have to brush your teeth for all of us it's a habit we don't think about it we just do it it's just a part of who we are or maybe we are driving initially it may be a struggle but after that you don't think about it. you're just driving right or some other things that we just do normally it's just part of who we are normal routine schedule eat at this time sleep at this time 
it's a habit and habits form the discipline that we carry if we don't have habits then we are we are lacking discipline but if we do have habits uh, then it's showing that hey you know there's some form of discipline now we are talking about disciplines or practices that are regular that may engage the spirit world what people do is sometimes they engage in regular prayer they don't even know what they are praying but they pray because somebody told them take this prayer go pray they pray but they don't understand when they are doing that what they are doing is they are sort of opening the door for demons to come and you know uh, oppress them a lot of people you can hear testimonies that people speak of and they say i never knew i did this they gave me a book i read the book every day i just said those uh, you know whatever mantras or this and that and all this happened suddenly i started seeing things and how because these practices they actually engage the spirit world so prayers are some things that people end up doing incantations again incantation is like worship um worship and uh, chanting things like that people do those things that opens the door for demon spirits mm, there can be meditation you know, meditation that people do uh that also can invite demon spirits um and you know many other things which become regular regularly people like wake up at this time do do this do that but it has nothing to do with god it has nothing to do with with uh, worshiping the living god then we have to be very careful about those practices why are we doing this when we do it mindlessly it's actually an open door for demons to enter in okay so these disciplines will allow demons to oppress us sometimes wrong lifestyle can also it's it's like a uh, you could say like a not really a discipline but somewhat in that category because we do it repeatedly like if let's say we know that we are not supposed to behave a certain way or we are not supposed to maybe engage in you know um something like uh, anything immoral like maybe some uh, illicit sexual relationship or wrong uh, sexual activity or even drug abuse things like that what are we doing we are actually harming ourselves we know it's sinful it's putting us in bondage but knowing that again and again and again and again we do the same thing as if nothing is going to happen but when we keep doing that maybe initially it's the weakness of the flesh but the weakness of the flesh can become a stronghold of of demons later on because what the demons do is make the will of the person very small you lose your ability to make decisions at one point initially you could but you kept doing it you kept doing it even though holy spirit is convicting we are saying it's okay it's okay next time next time next time slowly what happens my ability to choose i lose it that capacity has become small and smaller and smaller and smaller and i'm just not able to win against that voice in my head which is telling me to do the same wrong thing again okay i'm stuck but in this journey at any point demons can take over so when demons take over what happens is they sort of start energizing the whole activity and you're wondering i want to give up but what's happening why am i still doing it like this why is it all because you're no longer in control you're out of control somebody else is in control okay so these are the dangers of anything it can be something like lying we just lie or we we control people we manipulate people initially we are just doing it thinking nothing will happen what will happen nobody will know this that we're doing it but slowly it goes out of control because one is my will is no longer strong second is we are talking about demonic influence so that is why for a believer being so very careful about our personal walk with the lord our choices our decisions very important very very important
don't we we shouldn't it's not for people like we are not doing it so that people will look at us and say oh such a righteous person no there are other implications the way we walk before the lord first is that god sees us secondly we want to keep the door shut to demons we don't want any influence of demons in our lives okay so uh, we said that certain practices will invite demonic activity in people's lives and uh, also um, behaviors patterns sinful patterns they they allow an open door for demons to come in so we have to be very very careful so that's the first one please feel free to ask questions if at all you have any uh okay i'll move on the next one here is dedications okay so in deuteronomy chapter 7 verses 25 and 26 uh, this passage we'll read it and explain can uh, anybody go ahead and read it please either on campus or online it's there in our notes deuteronomy 7 25 and 26 you shall burn the carved image of their gods with fire you shall not covet the silver of gold that is on them nor take it for yourselves lest you be snared by it for it is an abomination to the lord your god nor shall you bring an abomination into your house lest you be doomed to destruction like it you shall utterly detest it and utterly abhor it for it is an accursed thing okay so god is talking about objects okay and even um carved image objects of worship carved images things that are used for other other worship god is telling the people it's an abomination to me anything that is you know like worship to some other god some other spirit uh it's an abomination to me so don't bring it burn it they okay, don't even keep it with you that's the instruction he's saying nor shall you bring an abomination into your house lest you be doomed to destruction meaning there will be an influence of that object that's what i was saying earlier when i said spaces and objects so these objects can carry demonic presence in them and they can influence now how did they in the first place um get a demon into them because those objects were dedicated so there is something known as dedication in the spirit realm okay which people use uh, like in the occult uh, apparently i mean i don't know too much but people say things like uh, when somebody is dedicated they become a voice of that spirit the spirit comes on them right you all may have heard i think in different cultures we we've heard these things that somebody is dedicated to that god or goddess and they start acting like that that goddess um so the spirits take over whatever is dedicated that is why when there are objects that are dedicated they can just take over even when it comes to cultural forms or some art forms if we dedicate it like let's say music right you dedicated to satan demons you must have heard all these stories they start to influence people in the wrong way i mean i've heard of uh, certain kinds of music that when people listen to it they they um, immediately go into depression they feel suicidal how is it happening i mean it's just music right music is not supposed to do that to people but there can be demonic dedication of art forms some pictures you know some things that are dedicated to demonic spirits so dedication is one of the ways in which um the spirit realm can get entry like the influence of the spirit realm can affect the natural realm okay so that is something we have to be very careful about um and uh, look at it the other way we talk so much about our oh, dedication to demons and sounds very scary but what if we are dedicated to god think about it we say right i'm dedicating myself to god i'm dedicating my uh, singing talent to god i'm dedicating my speaking ability to god i'm dedicating um, anything else 
my home, my family. You see, that again actually works because it's very powerful. What we are saying is, God, I want you to express yourself through me. So when I am dedicated, my abilities, my gifts are dedicated to the Lord. They become an expression for the glory of God. So even the flip side is, is something for us to look at. Consecrating myself, dedicating myself is very, very powerful. Okay, uh, And that, I think, is what Satan is trying to use the other way around. And unfortunately, people without knowing or knowingly, they are dedicating themselves through all these practices, evil things that they do, and, um, you know, worship. And then demons come. You dedicate the place. Before you start living here, you dedicate it to some spirits. They'll come and stay. And then if you ask them, how did you come? They'll be like, you only invited me to come here. That's why I'm here. Okay? So that's how they enter, through dedication. Uh, we've got to be careful. Yeah, just come to the... Chat here. Okay. No questions online. Yes. Yes, Akhil. Please use the mic. So when we start in the spiritual realm, mm. uh, to approach any uh, particular either uh, uh, place or anything that you feel has a stronghold, is it wise to you know refrain from doing it in the natural realm later if you feel there is a little more stronghold? Uh, the like, usual tendency is like, you know, there is a particular place X, Y, Z and there is something. So the tendency is to go, reach out, speak, think. But today there was an insight that, you know, the first thing that we need to do is start off with the spiritual rim of, you know, addressing it through prayer or fasting or uh, mm -hmm. other things. Mm -hmm. And then when you feel, still feel that there is a stronghold uh, in that particular place or people. So is it better to refrain on the natural, the next approach or... Not, uh, I mean, uh, see, it's all about being uh, sensitive to the voice of God. In some cases, God may tell us to hold on that, you know, that spiritual work is not yet done. So hold on. Maybe you need to go in later. But in some situations, after you've prayed, it may be the right thing to for you to even step in and start addressing it in a practical way also. Only then the victory will come. So it can work both ways. Sure. Okay, I think now we've uh, you know understood about dedication, and uh, we can be careful um, not to allow these things uh, in our lives. Now, moving on, the next practice that might affect is sacrifices. Sacrifices. Um, Apostle Paul. He writes about sacrifices in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 19 through 21. Could somebody online read this passage, please? Can I read, sister? Yes, yes, sister Gertrude. 1 Corinthians 10, 19 to 21. What I am what am I saying then that an idol is anything, or what is offered to idols is anything? Rather that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. And I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and of the table of demons. Okay. Thank you, sister. So here, as we noticed... Paul is mentioning that the Gentiles, maybe unknowingly, they think they are sacrificing to God. But whom are they really sacrificing to? Whom are they really sacrificing to? Just go back to it and see. Verse 20. Idols. Idols. Okay. Uh, but there's more to that. Can you, can you please read it? Verse 20. To demand system. Yeah, that's what Paul is saying. That they think they are sacrificing to idol, but who is actually receiving the sacrifice? Demons. Okay. So there is this uh, practice of sacrificing as well, which opens the door to demonic activity. Um, and so 
you know we 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 should be careful people have practices like uh, they would sacrifice material things sometimes they give um things that are grown in their in their field or uh, you know clothes uh, some objects from the house or it can be fruits uh, food items they they give it or even their labor they work and they kind of you know they they dedicate it to god so many things people sacrifice but when they are sacrificing what is paul saying it's not really the the idol that's taking it right there's something behind it and then people talk about hey i receive power it's true because power is coming but the source is the one that you know we are not very happy about from the demonic realm so these sacrifices are, are a way to draw power from the wrong realm or from the wrong kingdom um apart from this we said material things are sacrificed but sometimes uh living things are sacrificed animal sacrifices some of us are familiar with this right in some communities they do that they'll kill some animal and shed the blood why because it's it's an offering to the demons they're asking for it okay uh worse still it's very unfortunate but um, things have been done in in the world things like human sacrifice the sacrifice of the first born it's just like unbelievable what people do for demonic power in in their uh, lives but it's really sad it's really sad uh, but demons can push people to that extent and people can yield to that extent because of their lust for power lust for uh, you know fame and glory uh, but let us be aware that these things will also lead to an open door in the demonic realm but uh, in the bible there are references to you know human sacrifices king of moab offered his first born son on the city wall and god never liked it god was very angry with him for doing something like this but you see to to counter all these sacrifices okay god gave his one and only son the lord jesus christ who met every requirement one and only after that we don't see any other sacrifice in in the bible you know which is required for us uh, and for salvation but through jesus god has countered all of these sacrifices the sacrifice of god's you could say first born son he shed his blood and he cleansed our sins that's like the best that nobody can ever match up to but god has already done it for us and all these other sacrifices you know are uh, uh, they do not glorify god so sacrifices are a way through which demons can influence people and communities now the final one here is rituals rituals religious practices um so there are all kinds of rituals that people have and it may be a part of their worship many things they they'll they'll walk they'll turn around they'll you know sit stand so many things people will do or uh, as as a ritual um, there'll be a schedule morning you have to do this you have to be like this you have to dress like this you have to speak like this you have to eat like this but when <coughs> people do these things there will be some power something that they are seeing spiritually that's why they're doing it because demons can influence through these rituals and these religious practices but maybe the people don't understand where that power is coming from but we as believers need to know okay and in our own personal lives uh we we can also think through and see hey do i carry some disciplines which are unnecessary um are there any dedications you know maybe in my my life or my family's life which need to be broken uh, or uh, any sacrifices that that have happened which we need to cancel or uh, even rituals and religious practices if it is happening maybe you're the only believer in your house and others don't believe they are still practicing those things just stay away from those things don't get into that because you know it it's just real there will be some or the other influence of those things but it's not to scare us it's just to help us be 
aware and uh, stay away from these things. So um, I'll pause here for any questions before we can move on. Sister, I have a question. Yes, yes, Sister Gertrude. Yes, the lighting candle in the church, is, does it have a, a influence? OK. Um, See, sister, it's a, uh, it's a, actually, it's a difficult question which you're asking because I think every time we have to discern, you ask yourself, how are you feeling about it? See, if it's a one-off thing, um, someone passed away and then you went and they gave candles to all of you and you lit a candle, right? I don't, personally for me, it, it actually recently happened. Uh, but I, I was okay with it because... It's a one-off thing. I'm there. And I also asked myself, is it OK? Am I feeling fine? I had peace, so I lit the candle. So it's OK. But if you're feeling some disturbance, you're like, I don't think this is right, then just don't light the candle. Because that can also become like a ritual. You know, because in some places, they do that, right? You have to go yeah. light the candle and come back. So it's better to avoid all these things. OK. Thank you, sister. Yeah, sure, sure. In our side, uh, mm. we used to hear like uh, when someone gets murdered, uh -huh. and after that, that area, some people says that I hear that person's sound there, mm. and exactly how mm. he was uh, telling yeah. the same sound I used to hear. So, mm. how can Satan mimic that sound? And... Yeah, so uh, see the Bible. Uh, like in Hebrews chapter 9, I think it's verse 27, it says, For it is appointed for man to die once, after which is judgment. So this thought of there being an there being a spirit, you know, uh, wandering about, all that's not biblical. If someone dies, and even Jesus talked about it, when one dies, if you uh, die like in the Lord, you go to heaven directly. Uh, because Paul says, being absent in the body is being present with the Lord. So what is he saying? As a believer, I'm not here on earth. Then where should I be? I exist, right? Somewhere I exist. He says, being present with the Lord. That means directly, if you're a believer, you just go to heaven. Now, if you're an unbeliever, right? Uh, then, yes, you, you'll go to hell. And then you'll wait till the whole judgment, the final judgment happens. So... <coughs> Having understood this, what are these voices that people are hearing? And they, they say that, oh, the murdered person is the one who comes back, his spirit comes back. They're just demons. Demons know how to imitate. Okay, they, uh, There's something known as familiar spirit, uh, where uh, the demon is very familiar with, with uh, somebody's activities, their behavior, everything. They, they, uh, they, in that sense, they can imitate. And they can fool people. So they're demons. Yeah. That's a couple of questions in sync with yeah, what sure. you're discussing. So let us say uh, uh, there are scenarios where you know people give you, give us this tirpati laddu or some foods which is offered to mm. a thing. And the mind, in initial uh, mindset is like, you know, we I, I upfront I say like no, I don't want to have. So some mm. of them oblige. But on the flip side, during Christmas, so let us say I go and give them a Christmas cake. Mm. So is it okay when they give to just take it as just eat it and just leave it there? Or, uh, mm. you know, to upfront uh, reject saying, no, I don't want to take it. That's yeah. the first question. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the second one is, uh, suppose you are knowingly or unknowingly in, mm. uh, uh, a victim of any of the stronghold. Could okay. be a place... Okay. or any uh, or people or uh, anything for that. So how do you really, uh, <coughs> you, we discuss that, you know, uh, we are the ones who allow the demons to, uh, uh, you know, mm. uh, enter into things. So so then if you are a victim of any, any form of a stronghold, so yeah. how do you really come out of it? Yeah, okay. So uh, both are really, you know, important questions. I was just looking for the reference here. First Corinthians chapter 10, 
versus 27. Yeah, I'll just get the NKJV version of it. So Paul, um, he talks about a similar scenario, like let's say an unbeliever invites for uh, a meal, then what do you do? Okay, so uh, I think it's from verse 23, wait, let's go back to verse 18. Verse 18, okay, I'll quickly read it. It has an explanation within itself. Uh, observe Israel after the flesh and um, not. Okay, verse 19. What am I saying then? That an idol is anything or what is offered to idols is anything? Rather, that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. And I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and of the table of demons. Or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? Now, Go on to verse 23. He says, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but not all things edify. Okay. Uh, then I'll just jump to verse 25. Eat whatever is sold in the meat market, asking no questions for conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness. If any of those who do not believe invites you to dinner, and you desire to go, eat whatever is set before you, asking no question for conscience sake. But if anyone says to you, this was offered to idols, do not eat it for the sake of the one who told you and for the conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness. Conscience, I say, not your own, but that of the other. For why is my liberty judged by another man's conscience? But if I partake with thanks, why am I evil spoken of for the food over which I give thanks? Okay, so basically what Paul is saying is, first he said, don't uh, be um, involved or a participant in worship, right? Like you cannot uh, eat like a food offered to idols, meaning don't be a participant in those things. Now he comes to a, a place where, let's say somebody is giving us some food. And it is offered to idols. As a believer, he says, look, actually, I don't have to be afraid. All food is God's. Just because they dedicated it to some idol or whatever, don't worry about it. Pray, sanctify, eat it. Don't ask any questions. But if they say that it was sacrificed or it was whatever, dedicated, then for their conscience sake, you refuse. Understood. So I think very clear cut, like it gives you your answer. So you can always go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And your second question was, if we have been a victim of um, demons, yeah, in some way. So uh, I think um, we can pray and trust God for a restoration. Because if, I mean, uh, we didn't know and all, all of these things have happened in our life. Uh, but now we know. We can say, God, you know, I, I believe you will restore the years the locusts have eaten. And, uh, you know, everything that I've lost, you're going to give me double. Like, start making declarations like that. And don't worry. Don't worry about the destruction that the enemy has caused in your life. Just trust God for restoration. And, you know, like, come back with double strength. Okay? Great. Uh, yeah, coming here to our uh, chat, Shekhar um, is saying, if a person who is in Christ is dead and comes in a dream frequently, what is it? Is it safe? Okay. So Shekhar, when we talk about dream interpretation, we say that when we see someone or something, it can mean literally that person or there can be an assigned meaning. For example, if I see, if I see, you know, um, my father in my dream, it can mean my father or it can mean a person of authority. 
understood it's not my father that god is trying to speak to me about it can just mean it's somebody in authority okay uh, or if you see let's say moses in your dream it can mean moses but it can also mean a leader it can mean a deliverer right so interpreting is also something that goes into understanding the dream so if you see seeing a person who is in christ is dead um now you'll have to check really uh, pray about it shaker and see how you feel about it if you feel god is trying to communicate a message to you then pray and ask for an interpretation or share it with someone who might be able to help you but if that dream is bringing fear if it is bringing confusion in your life then that dream is not from god just reject it okay because dreams can come from god but demons can also intercept with dreams so some dreams if we feel it's not from god you can just cancel reject it say pray a simple prayer that says i cancel this dream in the name of jesus that's it okay i hope that answers your question okay um sister gertrude earlier i mentioned first first corinthians chapter 10 I think you've uh, written it already. Okay, uh, J. Um, Warren, you have a question. I think Miriam raised her hands first, so we'll go with you, Miriam, and then Warren. Then probably we'll wrap up the class. Thank you so much. Uh, I have a question to ask. Hmm. Uh, in uh, church, if you yes. are prayed for and then you don't fall. Mm. and then again they will come back and pray for you you don't yes. fall then they will bring a, a let me say anointing oil their oil i don't know if it is real then they will want to um, put it uh, on your forehead and then mm. you refuse then mm. after that they will say you are rebellious is mm. it a must that when you are prayed for you have to fall down or is it a must they have to put for you that anointing oil and why do they say if you don't fall you have a spirit of rebellious <laughs> okay thank you miriam uh, so in my own life experience i can tell you maybe i fell once i never you know fell otherwise uh, even if people kept their hands on my head but the point i'm trying to make is the what we have to check for right for effective ministry is the fruit that comes from the life of that person or what has happened in the, that person's life a miracle god has done a miracle now they have drawn closer to god they're living for christ they're serving christ that is the fruit the real result see people can fall get up and do the same old evil things that they were doing before how does it help falling is not falling is not the evidence of being touched by the anointing miriam i i'll just put it that way i hope that helps you and if if we don't fall and uh, you know by putting oil and all of that uh, people are trying to make us fall i'm not able to understand what what that is i really don't understand that okay fine um next warren would you like to ask something and miriam yeah i see your thank you here Yes, yeah, sister. No, actually, I, I just wanted to share something, but I think we're running out of time, so I'll. No, no, it's okay. Some... We we can always yeah. quickly. It's just to, just to share an experience, actually. Some there was a person who in in the UK, who, mm -hmm. who sent me a video, and basically, their husband had passed away about a year ago, mm -hmm. and in the UK we have uh, well, you know these uh, psychics and mediums, mm -hmm. who conduct these services, and people actually take it as a entertainment. Mm -hmm. So they had gone for this, and and a husband actually, this guy was speaking to a husband, and okay. he said a lot of things that were accurate, you know, mm -hmm. and they were like astonished, and I'm I'm like looking at this video in astonishment, like in in, in, in some sort of like, you know, uh, in horror basically. And the last thing that this this dead spirit said was, uh, by the way, the coffin is closed. It's too late now, mm -hmm. you know. 
it's too late oh. now there's nothing i can do so i mean they were and they were trying to interpret it in the, like a, a way that you know he's trying to tell someone but for me the interpretation was that it's too late now basically i'm in hell there's nothing i can do the coffin is closed you know that sort of thing but mm. it's just it just goes to show that the, for the unbelievers you know they take these things so lightly and and, and yeah. it's just dangerous yes it is very dangerous uh, never to to kind of um, uh, have any such influence in our lives to shut the door on it and uh, thank you for sharing uh, uh, warren these things do happen so you know fortune telling few like future demons can with the knowledge that they have they can but we know one thing it, the only person who knows everything is god we we say right one of the attributes of god is omniscience is the only one who knows everything but demons through their um, knowledge through history they can sort of come up with some guess guessing game and try and impress people so we shouldn't be falling for all these things okay so with that let's um, pray and close the class uh, would somebody online uh, pray please and then we can stop the call okay quickly though <laughs> because we have all right let's pray yes please Loving Father, in the name of Jesus, you are such a good God, a, a wonderful God, a loving Father. Lord, who can we compare to you, Abba Father? No one else. We want to thank you for this time. We want to bless your name, Lord, for speaking to us. Thank you for teaching us, O oh God. Thank you for the wisdom and knowledge, Abba Father. Thank you, Lord, for the things that... your name Abba Father we give glory and honor to you in Jesus name we are prayed Amen. Amen Amen thank you Miriam thank you everyone God bless you we'll connect in our next class have a wonderful day bye for now